Welcome to worship at Northfield United Methodist Church. I'm Pastor Rachel McIver Mori, and I am delighted that you are with us. If you have the opportunity, do let us know that you're worshiping with us today, whether via our Facebook comments or online.church or some other means. It's always good to know who is with us in the pews, so to speak. We hope that grace meets you today. We hope that you are given eyes to see and ears to hear the good in yourself and the world and the people around you. And we pray that in this time of worship together, we might lift up the grace and glory of God for all to see. Good King Wenceslas looked out on the feast of Stephen when the storm lay round about deep and rest and be. Stand by me, if thou knowst it telling, yonder peasant who is he, where and what is dwelling. Sire, there's a goodly pass underneath the mountain, right against the forest as passing the nest fountain. Bring me flesh and bring me wine. Bring me pine logs hither, thou and I will see him dine when we bear them thither. Peter and Lord, forth they went, forth they went together. Through the road went swallow land, and the bitter weather. Today's prayer is number 518 from the United Methodist Hymnal. It's inspired by the words of John Calvin. Please join me in an attitude of prayer. Strong covenant God, save us from being self-centered in our prayers and teach us to remember to pray for others. May we be so bound up in love with those for whom we pray that we may feel their needs as acutely as our own and intercede for them with sensitiveness, with understanding, and with imagination. This we ask in Christ's name. Lord, it is our prayer for others that we come before you. We ask you to hear our prayers for those other members of our Northfield United Methodist Church family those other members of our own blood families, those other members of our families by choice, those other members of our community, of our state, of our nation, and of our world. Lord, in this coming time of silence, help us to remember the others. Perhaps we have others already on our hearts and others' needs at the core of our prayers this and every Sunday. Perhaps, Lord, there is room in our prayers for others. And if so, please give us their names. In the silence, Lord, hear our prayers for others. And give us prayers for others as well. Lord, we thank you for hearing our prayers for others and for giving us the names of others for whom to pray. Lord, we pray now the prayer that Jesus taught those others, his disciples, as we say together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, 
hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Hey, it's Pastor Rachel, and it's time for our children's moment. I got a game for Pastor Jared for his birthday called Dilemma Rama. I don't know if this is reversing for you or not. Dilemma Rama is a game, and it's a game that's a, a would you rather game. And maybe you've played would you rather before. Uh, it's usually something like, would you rather have the legs of an ostrich or the arms of a gorilla? And then you have to decide which of those would be the least bad option to have. Me personally, I'm going with the arms of a gorilla. You can choose whatever you want. This game is like that, but instead of between, choosing between two options that uh, each one are, aren't great, this game is between two fun options. So, for example, would you rather have your socks come out of the laundry already sorted, or would you rather be able to speak in any language that you want? Would you rather be able to record your dreams or to have a magical refrigerator that's always stocked? Those are the kind of questions that this game has. And it's sort of a fun thing to think about when the options are all good and it's just which is the best of good options. It feels like maybe we don't always get that in life. But one of the things we're going to be talking about in January is looking for the good, especially in other people. And rather than expecting the worst, what would happen if we expected the best of ourselves and others? So I like this game, this Dilemma Rama game, because it helps me train my heart and my mind to think about what could be rather than what the worst might be. And I wonder what might happen. What good could come if we look at other people with the hope that God is already at work in that person and in other people doing good things? What would happen if we looked for the good in every person that's in our lives? Think of the people who you're interacting with uh, in class, in your family. What's the best you can hope for and the best that you could look for in each of them? That's a dilemma I'll take all day. We know that sometimes bad things happen. And that's okay to know that. But it's also really, really important that we're aware that God is at work doing good things too. And if you are on the lookout this coming week for good things in people, you might find them. And if you do, I'd love to hear all about it. Today's reading is taken from 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 1 through 9. Paul, called to be an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God and our brother Sosthenes, to the church of God that is in Corinth, to those who are sanctified in Christ Jesus, called to be saints, together with all those who in every place call on the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, both their Lord and ours, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I give thanks to my God always for you because of the grace of God that has been given you in Christ Jesus. For in every way you have been enriched in him, in speech and knowledge of every kind, just as the testimony of Christ has been strengthened among you, so that you are not lacking in any spiritual gift as you wait for the revealing of the Lord Jesus Christ. He will also strengthen you to the end so that you may be blameless on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful. By him you were called into the fellowship of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. The Yale Baby Lab is something I first heard about teaching the Rotary Ethics Workshop that we do for kids here in town, uh, juniors and seniors who've been identified as gu by guidance counselors as emerging leaders. And I was reminded of the Yale Baby Lab while reading Rutger Bregman's uh, book recently published in the United States, Humankind, A Hopeful History. 
This is a book we'll be reading and using alongside Paul's first letter to the Corinthians during the Epiphany season. The Yale Baby Lab is a lab which studies child development. And one question in particular they started asking was, when do we get a sense of right and wrong? Do babies know the difference between good and bad? And so they came up with sort of an ingenious way to study this. What they do is they bring in an infant two years old or younger, and they show the baby a puppet show, a very simple puppet show where there are two stuffed animals of varying kinds and colors. Um, and one of the stuffed animals is trying to open a box with a toy in it. And the other stuffed animal in, in one version of the puppet show helps the other stuffed animal and in another version slams the box shut. Then a research assistant who was not associated with the first administration of the puppet show and all that comes in and offers each stuffed animal to the baby. Now, which one will the baby choose? Is it gonna be influenced by what their favorite color is, what their own favorite stuffed animal might be? Is it influenced by male or female voices? Controlling for all of these things. 80% of children two years old and younger reach for the stuffed animal that was helpful. If you lower the age to three months when a child can't necessarily reach out, but you can measure how long they look at an object, 87% of three month olds will spend the longest time looking at the stuffed animal that offered aid. We know early what is kind. And this matches with what we understand of humankind from scripture. When God created the whole world and all that is in it, God said, it's very good. And we were part of that. It also matches the scripture that we heard today read from the first letter to the Corinthians by Paul, which we'll be using all through this season, where Paul reminds the Corinthians that they are called to be saints, that God will strengthen them to be blameless on that day before the Lord. That's how Paul begins his letter. Now, the rest of the letter we're going to deal with over Epiphany, and it doesn't always stay that good, but this is where it starts. It starts with the understanding that the factory presets on humankind is a bias toward good. Why does that matter? Friends, over these next several months, we're going to start coming home to each other. We're gonna start seeing each other more as medical treatments and vaccines get distributed, more opportunities to get together in safe ways. And as months warm up into the spring, even more opportunities. And that coming home to each other will have been after a year where our bonds have been fractured and frayed. And there are fightings without and fears within. How is it that we will come home to each other? What we will be talking about during this epiphany season is how important it is to understand that we were made for good, that God intended for us from the beginning, kindness, human goodness toward each other, compassion, decency. Those things matter. If you understand and believe that that is humanity's factory default setting rather than humanity's default factory setting being cruelty, greed, and harm, it takes you down a different path when we come home to each other. Let me give you an example, what I mean by what I say this. I've, I've used this story before because I love it, because it makes me out to be rather silly, and it's very, very useful for things just like this. When I was young, I bought a pair of adjustable roller skates from a garage sale. And these are the kind of roller skates that had a wing nut on the bottom that you could expand and contract it to fit over a boot or a shoe or something like that. And one of them I was sort of able to figure out, I was maybe seven or eight years old, and was able to fit it on my shoe. But the other one, well, the wing nut had gotten kind of rusted in the position it was. So I went to my dad and I asked my dad for a hammer, a screwdriver, and a wrench. And I beat 
the heck out of that poor roller skate trying to get that wing net off. And my dad sat quietly by and whatever dreams he'd had of me becoming a mechanical engineer were evaporating before his eyes. And eventually I ran out of things to try with these tools which clearly didn't match the job and dad pulled out his pliers that he always had in a leather holster on his hip and he grabbed the wing nut, twisted it off for me and left me to figure the rest out. I think he might have been shaking his head as he left but maybe I'm remembering that um, sort of in retrospect. We needed the right tool for that very, very simple job. Screwdriver wasn't made for that. A hammer wasn't made for that. A wrench wasn't made for that. But a pair of pliers was. The factory default settings on humans, if it's really goodness, we need to lean into that because that's when we are living into the kind of tools we were made to be. We're not made to be banging our heads against wing nuts that are rusted against each other, but rather we are made to be good. We are made to be kind. We are made to be decent. And when we're living outside of that, well, we're operating in a way that we as tools for the kingdom of God, we're not intended to be used. And we can't fix what ails us. If we begin with the notion that like, Genesis says we were made very good. Like the Yale baby studies say that we lean into what is kind. Like Paul says that we are called to be saints and that's how we should begin any conversation about how we do life together. If we buy that, that gives us our roadmap for how to return to each other over the course of this next year. Expecting and hoping for good in others and expecting good in ourselves. We know, we know that humankind is capable of some pretty terrible things. We've seen them, we've experienced them. But it matters whether we believe that that's the default or whether goodness is the default. Which one is it we were made for? Which one is it that God created us to be? And if we believe that we are made for cruelty, if we are made for hardness, if we are made for isolation, well, that's a really different frame on how we will return to each other than if we believe that we were made for goodness, kindness, decency. Let's lean in to the factory default setting from Genesis. Let's lean into the factory default setting articulated by Paul before he goes in to address all the issues that the Corinthian church is facing. And friends, there are issues. Let's lean in to our youngest selves reaching for the kind stuffed animal. The epiphany season begins every year with the story of the Magi coming to visit Jesus as a, as a child. And there are three gifts that are offered, gold for a king, frankincense naming the divine presence in Jesus, and myrrh pointing towards Jesus' eventual death. These are gifts which illuminate who Jesus is going to become. Let's offer this season to each other as a gift to illuminate who we are going to become on the other side of all of this. We have the opportunity now to start setting our course, to begin charting our way through the stars as we come home to each other. I believe it begins in the goodness God created in each of us, that God has called out of each of us, that even the youngest of us can point to and recognize. And that when we lean into that, we are doing the task God has created us to do. We're not a hammer trying to do a pair of pliers job. We are doing exactly what it is we were made to be and do. There is so much work to be done. And it begins with naming that we were made for good. Amen.
It matters where you start a journey. During this epiphany season, we will begin with the notion that we were created good. And that matters as we come home to each other this year. Amen. Thank you.